Today, I am going to be orchestrating something. Well, I already have it orchestrated, but I'm going to be bringing it into Sonar um, with VST samples, and we're going to make it sound good. It's something that only exists on the Sibelius score right now. So let me just make sure all my sounds are working. If I play right here. Oh, that's right. We're going to hear... Okay, so this is my MIDI file. I already brought this in here, and I'm doing a lot of cleanup work right now. I don't have any sounds selected or anything. So let's do, we're going to start with strings. And I want to go in order just to keep this thing organized. I'm not using a template. I don't know why not, because sometimes templates restrict me. I want to make sure we're uh, as, ex as expressive as possible. So I got a full orchestra here. The Sibelius file that we're looking at is part of a larger work. So I'm just going to do this one movement. And I'm pretty sure I'm using the whole orchestra. I don't remember exactly what instrumentation I'm using, but we're going to do it piece by piece. We might not need everything. It's supposed to be a forest theme. And I sent a, a, a demo out a while ago, and I'm going to play with it now, and hopefully I can get the sound good and so it's not just MIDI, MIDI tracks. All right, so let's well, start with the string section. What I like to do is let's get some hard vibrato tell if it's going really slow or if something's wrong. I think it's going slow, but I don't know why it's going slow. We'll see. Maybe because I'm streaming. We'll see. All right. Hold on. Uh oh, not responding. Come on, wake up, computer. While I'm doing this, we'll see what we got. We have... Yeah, see, there's going to be a string section. I'm going to need pizzicato patches on the, um, I'm going to need a solo patch, too. Actually, the beginning is solo cello. All right. Maybe, maybe, maybe. It's going too slow. All right, here we go. After all that. Good. Strings. There's, that's 18 violins. Now I'm going to bring in one with a smaller section. This is going to be the 11 violins. Let's see if it just takes this long. No, that was quicker. Good. A little different sound, different panning. Now we're going to get the uh, violas. These are just generic kind of things I like to do. Um, I'll bring in the uh, legato stuff later. Right now we're going to start with this. Suspend. Oh, uh, the violas are always bringing down about 6 dB. Uh, hold on, down here. Yeah. Uh, and then, why is this? Let me scroll over. Um, cellos. Let's get... I'm doing all the sus patches first, and then we'll do pizzicato. It's pretty loud too. I'm gonna have to bring that down. Play with that later, and then bass. Long for the big orchestra sound. Now I'm thinking as I'm doing this, I might not use any of these. I might go and do everything with uh, smaller sections. I might not want this whole big string sound, but but we'll see. All right, I'm gonna make this a folder. I'm gonna call this one strings. I don't know how clear that is, how much I can I can zoom in at all. Um, I don't have a zoom set on here. I'm using a PC. On my Mac, I know how to do it, but uh, we're going to move this to the string. Thing. We're going to do this piece by piece. Okay, so the beginning, I'm already, I already have a problem because right here, I want to have, actually, you know what I'll do? Zoom in here nicely. I got a solo cello, and I marked it espressivo. So we're going to go here to solo cello. And there's a bunch of different patches I ha have here to make it sound expressive. Um, I'm probably not going to want a hard attack ever, so we're going to use a smooth one. And then we have a key switch. So we have a key switch, looks like. Hmm, we'll see if that is what we want. It's a good place to start. So I'm going to actually make a new track. And this is going to be 
This is going to be called solo cello. Route it to contact number six. Put it in the folder of strings. And I'm going to do this and make just a cello part for now. Thing is with Sibelius, I mean with Sonar, you can only have one clef per track. I think I'm okay. I did everything in trouble. I, I, I'm weird. I like to look at tenor clefs sometimes. All right. So it looks like the solo cello goes only to here. So it's just these simple little arpeggios. It's going to be in, this, in the solo track. Let's get the smaller so I can grab more of them. So this is going to be my solo cello. And we're going to cut and paste. I have another version just in case I mess something up. Actually, I should save this as, well, I have this, save this forest test. I'll get nice file names when I'm done. Oh, turn off everything else. We want just the cello. And I clicked on the wrong one, didn't I? Solo cello. Oh, the tempo's changing. That's not good. You know why? I imported this from, oh, look at all these tempo changes we don't want here. I'm going to have to draw them in later. Right now we're at 96. Yeah. That needs to be more expressive, that long note. That just sounds kind of blah. So I'm going to try to get another patch. Oh, that MIDI. Whenever I use my board, it runs, sends a MIDI signal to Sibelius. All right. I don't want to. That could be distracting. So let's see. Oh, that's my volume up my mic. Oh, I realize my mic. I bring my mic up. That's better. Right? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Anyway. So what do we have? Expressive down. We're going to experiment with different cello sounds and so on. So much better. Expressive up. Yeah, I can make it alternate between those. Okay. I'm going to make this sound real. So cello expression down. Cello expression up. I think I'm at, now the mic might be too hot. Sorry. I'm still adjusting volumes on this thing. I'm in a different setup than I usually use. All right. I usually stream games from home and now I'm at work. All right, we're doing contact player. Contact player, we're using seven and eight. Seven and eight. Now, we're gonna bring those notes down. Bass clef. Able to read it nicely. I don't know, this is, it makes me think I should change MIDI editor, but. Now what do I have in my, I have those first two as one bow. So down, up, down, up, or I can make it down, up. So I was using down bow. I don't know, we'll see, what if I make this? I think I maybe do the whole thing. Or is it better just those first two? Yeah, that doesn't match well. This might match better. And why am I losing a beat? And I kind of like how it cuts off a little early, though. Let me bring this back a little. Oh, I'm not in the right resolution. I like doing 120 ticks per quarter note. It's easier to do the math. All right, let's let's try it this way. Oh man, my copy paste stuff is acting weird. down here. Now let's highlight just this. Let's bring these on the other track. 
So think of those as, as different bowings. <laughs> There's going to be other stuff happening here. Yeah. I don't want to sound like it's moving, though. All right, we're going to have to mess. It still sounds a little bit separated, so I might blend it in with another patch. Oh, if we had a real cello, it would be just really nice. But maybe it depends on budget. Okay, that's temp track for... You know, we have a solo cello, I'm gonna have to decorate here. At the same time, we also have pizzicato bass. Boop, boop. So it's solo, right? Yeah. Got that, we don't need this, that's just. Now, I'm gonna need a lot of strings, I think. Because we're just doing the beginning, and I have some patches move around. So we're gonna go to a solo bass. Probably should have done this first instead of doing all the other sections, but. Um, Pizzicato with round robin. So we're going to call this oh, not an audio track. Pizza. I always write pizza. <laughs> um, it's like eight. Move the folder. So the beginning, just this little introduction here. How many measures? One, two, oh, my measure number is all off because this is a bigger part. One, two, three, four. It's just up to the little tenor clef stuff. Okay. Too easy to make a little split right here. I'll take off the snap. Bring them down. That doesn't sound like because I put it on the wrong channel. Ooh, that sounds cool. Let's see. So I'm sure all the notes are here. What is that? No, no, no. That's we're not listening to that. That's the clarinet. Good. Here's my. Do this. Nice high bass part there. That's going to sound nice. I, I might want to make the bass pop out a little bit more here. I know it's marked piano, but give it a little boost because it's. Pizzicato. So we're just going to do velocity. Let's do, let's do 110%. Be right here. Good. Now, since I like doing this vertically, Let's see what else we got at this section here. A bunch of rests. I got a clarinet solo with lots of dynamics written in it. So we're going to have to find a way to get these swells to work. I'm going to do it with envelopes, I think. So let's get a new instance of our synthesizer. Or sampler, I should say. Not a synth. And I'm going to put on here... Where are we? Woodwinds... Solo clarinet. Oh, I forgot which one I'd like to use. This is going to be, you know, I think it's the the legato. I might have to mix a couple samples together. Um, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, let's see how this expression. That might be better. And let's do the slow crescendo. How slow is the crescendo? I should have this stuff memorized by now. I've been using it for a decade. Way too airy. All right, let's try this. So we're going to call this Woodwind 1. 
this is strings one. We might we might need two. We'll see. I'll worry about score order and everything later. Not important right now. So what do we call this? Clarinet. Clarinet. Legato. This is the clarinet expression. And put them to the right bus. Let's get the clarinet music. All the stuff that's not in a folder. This one. So where is the solo? I mean, it's all solo, but yeah, it's all going to be solo clarinets, right? Until like, you know, I have it marked solo, meaning just bring it out. So we'll use a little different patch, but it's just those first couple bars here. I'm going to move these to the woodwinds just to make this neat. Yeah, because I got the strings here. Where's this track? I don't need that track. And we can just do it by the labeling, what we're going to be doing. Okay. Clarinet one. It's your clarinet. Oh, I can have her. Not bad. Let me hear the other patch. Oh, can't hear it at all because it's not on. dynamics aren't so we're gonna do a, a little dynamic envelope here so we might have to use a different instance of this to make this cleaner so envelopes at the end of all these notes I just want them to go to, to nothing a little bit more of a diminuendo can I switch it to I might be able to see the pitches better I rarely use this view but it's MIDI so I should all right And I'm going to do right here on the note. Insert a node and then cut it down. There's a lot of reverb. That's what we're hearing. Okay, so we'll bring it down a beat late. It's a little bit too long. It's a little diminuendo. Cut. Now, where do those hit? They hit on two on every measure on beat two. So I can just copy this envelope every two bars. Copy the envelope to here. Yeah, it's kind of easy. Just so it's consistent. Okay, sounded okay. Now it's going to get a lot more complicated. This next measure, the whole orchestra, the, the texture changes. So we have strings doing the same thing for these next four bars, but we have a corngalay and we have the two other clarinets come in and a bassoon. So let's start with clarinets just because we're in clarinet mode. I got some held out notes with swells. Okay, I can use the same patch. Definitely, you can use the same patch here. Clarinet one, two, three. Maybe putting on the other ones. Get this out of the way. The trill, huh? That's got to be. That's gonna be fun. We're gonna use a trill patch. So this is gonna be, or is that gonna be this one? Yeah. 
should be more dry. It's a second clarinet. It's going to be over here. And what patch should we go to? Number 31. Without getting out of hand. Do, 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 do. And then A, no, this D and this D here, I want to have there. The other clarinet. It's okay, I know where I am. Why is it a D? In that? Oh, have I transposed here? No. What is happening? D. Oh, C. Oh, these are the Ds. Huh, there we go. And then this is the expressive clarinet. 32. That's how it's going to sound like two clarinets, two different patches. <laughs> That's gonna be maybe a little trill thing. We'll see. All right. Now there's a couple trills on this clarinet. We got D E flat, and then we have this low clarinet here too. Whoa! Don't, don't mess up my score. So we got D and E flat. So again, bring this up, and it's probably gonna go solo clarinet effects trill half step. So we have this. Hopefully it's not going to sound like out of sync. No, it's going to sound because it's a real trill. That's what's good about this. So clarinet, trill, half, half step. Put it over here, make it neat. This is going to be track number three. So contact two, channel three. And we gotta plug them in. It's gonna be this note. Did I bring it in here? There we go, number 33. Where is it? There's the trill. Did it turn it on? What what happened? Yes, I do. I think instead of this, you know what I'm gonna do? Is mute the TTS. Alright, look where we are. That's quiet it is? It's marked quiet, okay. Is that feel right? Okay. Well, it goes here. So it's whoops. But there's no why is there an E flat there? There shouldn't be I guess that's just the way the trill's going. Two beats. Alright. Not much happening there. Now we're gonna have this low clarinet note. This G A A. I can probably go on the same patch. Take that and put it up here in 31, the other one. No, not 31. That's not where he wants. What, what? I didn't paste something right. Copy. There we go. 31. Why is it pasting the wrong thing? Just these guys, just these notes, right? Copy. Did I just copy it? Yeah. No, I didn't. Look. I don't know why I unclicked that. All right, there we go. Now we have this. What was that, what was that low hit? Here and something that isn't supposed to be there. This is this has to be a little bit quieter. It's nice that there's a swell, but it should be done differently. These ba these these fourths right here are way too loud. We're gonna make them like eighty, and I'm just gonna stagger them a little bit so I don't hit. This, this is the OCD part, and now this is gonna swell fifteen. So I have the clarinets in this channel. Luckily, I've been able to work them all together. It's not going to be that easy soon. I have to make a new channel just for the volumes. No, not all that stuff. All right, what else do I have in this introduction? I got a bassoon. See, these swells are kind of ignoring, and I kind of want them 
All right, so we need just a low bassoon, a low bassoon, just a bassoon right here, doubling the clarinet, just in different notes. Let's get that going. Where to put my other instance of contact? They're in a sloppy order, but sometimes that's okay. So what I was doing earlier was kind of useless. All right, so we're gonna do a solo bassoon. Just a normal sustained patch. Okay. And I could just use what I already have. Bassoon. that right here number four so I make sure I don't have any extra notes in here oh there was a core and glay that I think we had well, I can probably delete these because we already used them let's get this thing neat now where did that bassoon go oh it's nice yeah it's just too quiet it gets too loud too well maybe it gets here so we're gonna do like 60 to 80. Right, should it get a little bit, does each one get louder? No, 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 no. These all have to be 60. And then it's gonna swell. I think they're all gonna to swell together, so that's fine. the core anglais and I don't know which one to use so we're going to experiment there's two of them there's a nice little patch here it's expressive it's coming together nicely English horn they call it. I think I might like two better we'll find out um, no let's use Q leg because it's all legato right yeah obviously except for the first tongue note but we, we can get away with did it not show up? Don't crash, don't crash. Come on. Well, I'm waiting. Let's see. Then we'll have this whole intro done, except for, all right, there's an oboe solo coming up. And then we're gonna get some staccato notes. Oh, before that, we gotta get these strings. Look at this, it switches all to um, bass, big section bass, and then cello sections. So everything's gonna sound bigger right here. I'm not responding. Uh, let's take note. Violin section, we have to have these swells on the violin. They're all gonna work together so we can put them on their own channel. And then the cello and the bass, they can be on their own their own channel as well. I'm just like letting this sit until it wakes up. Sometimes when I drag things in here, it's freaking out. Wake up, computer, wake up. Or wake up, contact. Oh no, don't, don't tell me I have to restart. That won't be fun. Save. Oh, I can't save. Is it, is it dead? Is it dead? Yeah. I should have got rid of to close Adobe stuff. I don't really need that right now. All right, hold on. <sighs> Should have restarted. Oh no. All right, let's bring that back up. Oh, waiting. All right, so we got. <laughs> 2D, so we're going to do some cello. This will be down, up, down, up. Or I could just have it in one patch. I don't really care too much about bowings. This is um, for, where's my video game folder? Hopefully I didn't lose anything. Loading patches. <laughs> We're not there. We're not there. We're not there. Previous change. All right. So I was bringing in the, the English horn, the Coranglay. And it 
crashed. So we're going to go back here. Woodwinds, English horn two, we're going to try long this one. Let's see if it's a little bit too much. So now I'll use this patch. And it's number five. And we're hearing things a little bit extreme for the moment. But let's exploit. All right, let's hear with the English horn. Got to see the notes so I can edit them. Here we go. Here's where the melody comes back in. <laughs> Works nicely, I think. It's a little bit loud, but the sound, I think, is fine. Now, here, it sounds empty because we don't have the strings in here. So let's get the big bass pizzicato. You know, all those things I loaded earlier, I might want to get rid of because it's getting really messy. But so again, navigating to folders, strings, nine double bases, short. Where's pits? Spits, pits. Here we go. No. Maybe I shouldn't drag because both times it crashed. Should really drag it here. There we go. And at the same time, while I'm here, I remember there was a. We already have the cello. Good. We have the cello up up here. The hard cellos are four. So get off of this folder. Pits bass solo, and then we're gonna make a new folder, a new, a new MIDI track. Um, MIDI track. Where'd it go? Why did it go in the Did it go in the woodwind folder? Oh, there it is. So pits bass section. And now I'm looking at uh, where's my other instruments? Ooh, I, can, I can do that. That's right. Um, bring it back up. All right. So pits bass number 10. Number 10. So let's bring it in here. So these pitches, just these four. No, it's not just those four. This is like the whole track, let's say. And we can do make a part. So if I go like this, contra bass. Where is it? Oh, this looks horrible because it's not edited, but that's all right. We're at, we're at this part. Is this all pits? It's pits here. And I have a reminder that it's still pits here. I don't even need that. It looks like the whole thing is pits. So I didn't even need I didn't even need the other part. Huh. The other the other track. <laughs> I mean, uh, so that, there's okay, good. So let's clean that up a little bit, going back into the, the synth the synth rack. This is why I don't want to use a template, because I don't might not need anything, it's just gonna clutter stuff up. Alright. So pit space for the rest of it. So this one's gonna be set to. This track. Pit space section. Pit space section. Put in the bass clef. Don't hear it. Um, because I'm on the wrong one. Um, and then the cello section. Bring that to. Do I have it? Oh, it's cello section. What was it again? Four probably. No, smooth. There's hard and smooth. Let's try smooth first. Number six. It 
doesn't sound like a section at all because it's probably not <laughs> on. yeah that's not a section it sounds empty so let's go back to strings oh, okay here we go we need this There it is, right? The Q leg. Five. Now the strings are just totally getting killed, uh, killed by the um, clarinet. So let's bring up the string. Let's bring down the clarinet, actually. Where are those woodwinds? Woodwinds right here. So I got, oh, that's right. I put the swells in already. So if I take the swells, can I highlight all the nodes? No. Okay, there we go. And down. I can't arrow key down. I can't have to drag them. I want to leave a little bit of headroom here. Let's see where we're going. Oh, I don't have it being sent to the master. That's strange. Well, why not? Let's move that. So I don't know why it wasn't doing that. That's kind of strange. All right. Anyway, so strings. We need to put the big lush strings in here now. So you have the cello being sent to this bus. And these the thick ones, these violins here, might have to be on a separate channel. Because this is going to be, maybe that's not a solo. It's just a straight up violin. I mean, the violin section? Okay. So there we go. We got these three that we made earlier on. So this is going to be tracks one, two, and three. So channel one. And I don't know if I like the panning that this is on. I'm going to center them. I don't know if that's happening with the video. That's something we're going to have to mess with too. Some nice MIDI messages get sent here that determine your panning for you. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Violin one, two, and three. I'm hearing these chords I don't remember writing. Let's just hear the. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Oh, it's crackling. What's all the crackling? What's all the crackling? I have no idea. No idea what that is. Hopefully it goes away. I, I remember it's just a moment. I think it's just too loud too. These have to be a lot quieter. Eh. Just these. I'm just gonna put these at like fifty-four. in three. Oh, time signature. Alright, 
this all has to be fixed. We gotta make that sound like that. So that means breaking up the, the texture a little bit and breaking up the, the sound. So we got 60, 60. So that, all right. Kind of sounds like that, but if I double it with a, with a smooth one, I think. So those notes are on one, one and, one, an and of two. that going um with some different notes now different pitches <laughs> oh it's really why is it so loud where's it supposed to be let's just make let's make sure these are all more standardized let's put them like it Notes. There's no key signature, is there? No, it's just going to transfer over, right? Obviously, the enharmonics aren't going to transfer over. This looks like it repeats. section right now. Alright, the violin mess around with that because that has to sound a lot more expressive. And now oh we got ta oh we got percussion. Do any percussion yet? That's gonna be fun. And there's also an oboe that's supposed to be doubling that part. And then flutes. And then staccato clarinets. So let's find some nice staccato clarinets first. It's getting so messy, but okay. At least the score is neat. If I need to get it played, I like using the solo ones. Staccato. Oh, it's a three clarinets. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it should be fine. And here, number contact five, channel number six. Put it somewhere. This is getting again so messy. Let me just get this organized. These three clarinets should go down with the other clarinets. 
solo guy separate. Okay. Now, staccato part. Okay, play. We don't need the chord play right now. We don't need to listen to the scene. Markers. This is marker 17C. Put a C here. Yeah, these clarinets, but I have it written lightly. We're going to get as light as we can with the computer. And look, it becomes three clarinets, and those are all staccato, so those are all going to go on the same track. And we're looking at, oh, you got to look at clarinet one and two. Ah, I'm not looking at the right parts, am I? Oh, I am. Let's do it like this. These two, these three, I should say, all three of these are going to be brought to one track. There's one called clarinet staccato. Cut, and then 41. Oh, come on, why does it do that? <laughs> and you can't see what track you're going to paste to. 41, paste to one track. Hopefully it's going to... Yeah, okay, it looks good. Yeah, it's cool. It's just, it might be a little... <laughs> cello's too loud, that's what it is. Cello's blaring. What does it add in terms of dynamic? Piano, everything here should be quiet. It's mezzo piano. Well, we're going to change that. Cello. all down like 10 percent if i have two people like you know the two patches just to make it sound more real let's go to 90 percent still too much 95 percent Too. We haven't done an oboe yet. Now, is this a solo oboe? Well, obviously, it's a, yeah, but it says solo, so we want to make sure it sounds expressive. Solo oboe. Now, which. So it's expressive vibrato. Let's try that one. Yeah. It's going to be nice. Oh, one. Seven. Okay, we are lined up already. that the strings are on top. I gotta change the score order. This drives me crazy when things are out of order. Whoa, it's so quiet. Things you can do orchestrationally. Actually, I don't wanna mess with it too much, you know? Grace note that does that. A fourth. Let's see what we have. There's a grace. I don't know if it's a fourth. Let me just see. No idea. I think it goes up actually. Let's see. Yeah, it's not going to work. So, oh, it's, oh, it's fall. Let's fall. 
Whoa, that's nope. All right, so we're gonna have to just make this oboe stand out a little bit better. This one's gonna be louder. Piano. double oboe there too just while I'm here let's bring in the other oboe sound that's the expressive one to make it sound like two oboes we're going to put in oboe two and oboe two is going to be the other sound down a lot. I don't know if that's the sound I want to use, but yeah, oh, what's that? That was cool. <laughs> um, Piccolo, it comes in here too. Look at all this orchestration. So let's get the flute and piccolo going. Should they go on their own thing? Is the question. No, no, we got some space. Good. So solo piccolo flute. <laughs> piccolo flute. Uh, this is going to be a round. Uh, well, hold on. Where's the flute? No, the flute. The piccolo actually is going to play a melody. Well, that still should be a. Hold on a sec. Let's try. I don't love piccolos. I don't. <laughs> it has to be used correctly. Um, solo flute. And I think the flute, I like. I always like the round robin, the Q leg experience I think some of the others don't sound well this is not an exposed part it's a little uh, flourish so right here we're just gonna throw those on here and when we have to do staccatos and stuff we'll put them in a new patch so piccolo is gonna be nine flute is gonna be ten And this flute is also going to be ten. Rewind. Where where is that? Oh, that's right. I'm not, I'm not looking at the tracks. Get rid of the strings. We're not worried about the strings right now. Let's go to piccolo. <laughs> Fine song, I think. Flute. <laughs> this pickle is super high, okay. a little loud uh piccolo 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 we're gonna bring your piccolo down an octave just so i can see it better and then we're gonna do an octave transposition up here it's a high e it's way too loud Oh, 
whole section is almost done. What else we got? Oh, no. No, I did that. I did this clarinets. There's no bassoons. Yeah, there's no brass. I haven't done any brass yet. Because there isn't any. Until the end. There's a big, there's a cadence with the trombones. We got percussion. That's going to be fun. Before we do that, let's get these trombones and tuba. So there's two trombones, bass trombone and tuba, hitting these nice, full, thick chords here. This is calling for a new sampler. Let's see. Trombones. We're gonna just we're doing solo. I think that always just works better. I'm not writing big that's just the way it is. Um It's weird to start with trombone, but it's okay. I can. So that's the only. Ch did I have bass trombone? Ooh, there's no. Sp okay, maybe we'll use the Wagner tuba. We'll see. What's the four trombone? Did I have one that says no? I guess it's in there already. We'll see. Tuba. I think we'll be able to be okay because I think that trombone. This trombone we have it's going down E anyway, so Yeah, we're gonna be fine, I think. No. Brass. I just noticed I never tagged it. Okay, okay, it doesn't matter. Figure that out later. Let's see these brass parts. Oh, I didn't bring it down. Here we go. Brass. I wish you could look at everything at once, but. So we got those four, and let's see where we got things. This is going to be contact six, trombone one, or trom all the trombones will just go in the same channel, unless we may have to make it sound like more than one person. Then we'll have to use a different trombone sound. And then the tuba. Nope, not there yet. That was cool. have the tubas and trombones. I need to see them. Here we go. Or trombone. I should say tubas. One tuba. And then we got... Now is this bass trombone good sounding? It's not. <laughs> that needs to be cleaned up. Maybe I want to change the chord. I don't know. Oh, because the tuba is off by an octave. But why is it B flat... I don't know. I might want to change the voicing of that chord. The two but What is this chord here? What is this chord that we're looking at? It's a it's a B flat. So maybe I don't want the C. Maybe I should make this D. <laughs> Make that F. Make this. Yeah. Speaking of it, these big parallel fifths. I think it's okay. Let's see. But is that? Yeah, I think it's a little bit better. Percussion time. All right, 
what do we need for percussion? We have tom toms and bass drum. Looks like I didn't label. Yeah, just bass drum and toms. Real simple. And then we're gonna get snares. Okay, but snares off. You say snares off. Okay, so I have like a field drum. So let's see what we got here. So much percussion to go through. Um, drums, concert toms. I wonder if the snare patch is going to have like a, a DXF roll or something that says DXF. Those are just rolls. I don't think they're going to do what I want it to do. Oh no, is this crashing? Is it crashing again? No, okay. I hope. This is why I save all the time. I think streaming just makes it much worse. <laughs> See that? Then we have, we have one, two, three, and and three, one, two, three. Oh man, did it crash again? Every time I drag things in, not every time, many times I'm dragging things in, it seems like it's crashing. Why, why do we wait? Then we have this. So that's also Tom. Come on, computer, wake up. Okay, sonar, sonar. Do I have to upgrade? Not upgrade. Do I have to change grade? Pro Tools or something. Yeah, look at all this orchestration here. This is going to be fun. <laughs> all this stuff added in it. Trumpets and horns. Just, it's kind of bothering me about those last chords on, on the trombones too. I still want to mess with that. No, that, that works definitely. I don't know if I like those big parallel fifths. We'll figure that out. Because like this chord here, I mean, is a big A, but it's A major nine. Yeah, that's why the trombone should have something more neutral. I think. Let's see if I, what was the original? I have to keep hitting undo. Uh, yeah. Oops. Where did those go? I want to hear just a MIDI real quick. So these big, big chords right here. They're cool, but I don't think they're going to blend nicely. All right. Back to this. So we have bass drum concert, bass drum Wagner. I wonder what. So it's going to be fun. And then we're going to put. I don't know what the difference is from concert and Wagner. So let's see. That's all I need is just a bass drum. All right. So this is going to be. Oh, did I add two extra? I added two extra contact players. Why did I not remember to myself do that? Um, no, I didn't. I know what I'm doing. This is the brass. I just put it in this old folder. All right. Ooh, we gotta put the we gotta put the contact player in the brass folder. And get rid of this folder. So percussion. This pit track has some percussion. I forgot about that. Wrote this so long ago. I picked percussion, and we're gonna put we're gonna have toms, and then we're gonna have bass drum. And we'll deal with the snare thing later. This is a snare with no snares. So I don't know if this has one or if I could just fake it with a tom. I don't know. I think I did it that way because when I was writing this, I was writing for just three percussionists. And I didn't want them to go and get another thing at toms. I don't can't remember the deal. And there's a vibraphone. Okay. And there's gonna be timpani too, so this is gonna be good. It's gonna be fun. Start with just one thing at a time. This t Tom's was the track one, and then bass drum channel two. And I'm pretty sure all the MIDI data is here, but I want to anyway move it by hand. So focus, we don't need this. We gotta focus on percussion. Um, all those channels. 
got here we go cool so here's percussion that's the bass drum part looks if I split this here's bass drum and the toms go to when well they all go the whole thing I think <laughs> I think this is the part that changes. Okay. Did I miss the bass drum part? We're going to see in just a second. No, I think we're good at this end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then snare. Uh oh. What's that snare? Oh, you didn't bring them up high enough. <laughs> bass snare doesn't bring it high enough. There we go. Let's hear them together. They sang. Okay. C. No, why does that not sound like a bass drum? Because it's not. Pick which one we want. Which one do we want? Yeah. Because it's just putting like generic notes in here. Hold on. Transpose. Is that too high? Yes. You said C, right? I like the toms. That might be the ones I want. We'll see. So, tom toms, bass drum, bass clef, and the way I have it in the score is middle. So, I think one, two, three, or five, three, four, three, four, and later on it does go lower. Okay, so. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And I have it as three, four, three, four. Actually, to make it a little bit more, oop, those are sharps. I could do it like this diatonically. I know it's C E G B D for the five toms. This here replace this one and replace this one. And is this the same thing? And is this the same thing? Now we got something new. This last chunk. Oh, did I mess that up? No, we're good. It's a 29. It's not really 29 in the thing. So this is when we go to what? So Tom, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. So two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. Why did the bass drum stop? Oh, because they got to switch drums. So the bass drummer is supposed to switch to the snare. work at the strings the cello so let's look at the strings now it's a lot of work doing all these parts um, okay so we got C violin one violin two viola let's look at those first and let's just focus on these staves I want to use a different patch. Oh, I already have those in here. Okay. Ah, I 
like it super high like that. That's good. I think the viola just is a little bit loud. Yeah, look at that. It jumped. Oh, yeah. The panning got all screwed up. Right. This is some MIDI stuff that's being sent in here. And it's changing my volumes. So we're going to have to make envelopes in the beginning that set these. And then we're going to do... Because the panning is already done by Symphonic Orchestra. So you have to... Yeah, you got to set it in the beginning. Hopefully that's the correct way to do it. Because there's something in the MIDI file that I made in Sibelius that set up its own panning. So we have to make sure it doesn't get messed up. So I can do this all these tracks. Let's just do it for all of them. And then the bass. Oh, where is the bass? I didn't, oh, did I, I moved it. So. at all. Uh, let's bring this guy back. And that's got to be boom boom. Just with changing the volumes and getting it to blend is going to be tough. Let's see. Let's here from the top. Let's hear from the top. I like the little tune, but it's way too loud. So I have it on the same channel, so I'll just do it with the. Oh, look at all the panning stuff screwing up this too. Ooh, that's good. that's boring though. I don't want to fix that right now because it's just tedious. So we're just gonna do it this way first. Let's try with velocity, ninety percent. I know it's gonna change the timbre a little bit. That didn't do anything. 2 more sections. It's for a game, so it shouldn't be too long or too epic. But this right here got us to go back to the 4-4 and it's a huge orchestra and a lot of it might be redundant. We'll see. Well, the string, I, I like it. It's going to be interesting with the strings cutting out and more brass heavy with those swells. we got to program all those swells in there too. So that's right here. Where is it? My music. Oh, I closed this thing. So right here, we put a new marker, a new meter, meter key change. Make sure you're in the right measure. Four four time, right? It didn't happen. Hold on. What happened? Measure thirty three. 
33. Got a four, four times. All right, there we go. Now, there's a lot of volume stuff that has to be done. And percussion, we're going to add some, t some timpani. We'll do that first. I always forget which one I like to use. Uh, let's try this one. Those are only rolling. No, it's not just rolling on the timpani. We're not, that's roll. Maybe it was this one. I do this all the time and I just always forget what I'm, what I like to use. Yeah, that's the one I like to use. Okay. So timpani number three. contact player let's do it timpani only and look the, the panning and everything it's it's doing Sibelius's panning so I gotta do like the zero percent right. timpani. yeah it's gonna be messy um, so this is to be an E flat <laughs> Change the timbre with the. Yeah, are we loud here? No, we're PP. It only gets adjusted, I think, with the um, mod wheel. So I'll do that. I'm done with this. So just rolling up, tuning every note. Okay, so this have to. Let's just do the timpani for the whole piece. Look at just the one part. Whoa, why is it pink? Only. Where are my notes? <laughs> Where's the part? Really? Okay. That's not helpful. <laughs> oh, why can't I make parts? This is this machine I don't think is working great. Alright, then the timpani changes to a little bit louder volume at the end. That's the only thing that changes. This is easy. He's supposed to be secco, but I don't really know how to do that on here to make him like touch the drum to grab it. This part we're not even doing, right? Yeah, we can cut at the measure prior. The A is the last measure. Well, the A, yeah, and then we have a new, this new piece of music. So we're going to do, we're going to put an end. And not Ned. Only had three letters, and and this is gonna we're not gonna have to deal with any of the rest of the music. I probably get rid of that now. Maybe give myself a measure extra because this is you know from a big piece. So we're gonna cut right there. It's gonna be good. Yeah, it's only two minutes. <laughs> It cuts before that. That's a different piece of music. So no one needs to listen to that. Now look at all these harp things and strings. This is going to be beautiful. It's just going to take some time. All right. So we have this part we're looking at here. So timpani, tuba, and trombones. We have to have swells on all of those. So I might make a new thing for the other brass because they're not going to swell. So let's do brass. Start in the right spot. Um, this is going to be four before D, right? Just right mark where D is. Hey, maybe here's wrong. Change it to these just thick chords. Really blah voicings, but I think four before D. Is my contact there it is but this one I'm above the trombone so all of these are going to have a like a swell if there's a swell patch that would be even better 
than doing it this way. So I'm just going to check that real quick to see if there's a trombone swell. Um, trombone crescendo. What is it? Oh, that's not what I want. That's a bass trombone. It's, oh, I mean, it's cool that I found that. Let's see. Effects. Oh, yeah, there are crescendos. <laughs> Oh, this is some cool stuff. What is this? B N D N H T. Am I? I don't want to get distracted. But... Well, okay, I'm not doing any of that, but it's awesome. Okay, so these crescendos. How long are they? One, two. So we'll do the two second crescendo because I know it's not really two seconds. It's actually closer to one. But... Yeah, we're gonna do this for this part. Insert new MIDI track, trombone, crescendo, crescendi, <laughs> plural, brass, and we're going to put this up to channel number, number three, channel number three, and it's going to be just for this part, where's my staff? Change it to just trombones, and we'll we'll figure out what to do with the, t the tuba later. Actually, the tuba doesn't look like it has to do that, right? The tuba is going to go boom, boom, boom. Oh, how am I looking at the right spot? Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, the tuba just go boom, boom, boom. The trombones are going to have these little swells. The trumpets have this little majestic thing. The horns are hitting chords. Okay. Saying all the notes are written, but still, it's a lot to think about. Uh, do, 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 do. Cut. Now all everything's being paced to thirty. I'm on track. I should look neat. Trombone, bass clef. This is even easier to read. <laughs> Some reason is written an octave higher. Why is the tuba doing that? No one tuba doesn't transpose, guys. There you go. You read tuba low. Good. Okay, nice. All that worked for just that one little section, but it's okay. Now we have trumpet, fan well not fanfare, but then ba -ba 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 -ba. I think it's the only trumpet is that the only trumpet thing in this whole piece? Yeah, it doesn't even do anything at the end. I don't use enough trumpets. <laughs> and a lot of this might not even be necessary, but I think it sounds cool. So I'm not going to change anything. Let's just do solo. Uh, it's a fa You know what? It's a fanfare. We're going to use this one that says four trumpets. I know it's only three, but I think... Oh, that's not good. We're not going to use that. I need one that's marked smooth. Okay. There we go. But I don't really need vibrato. Let's try something with no vibrato so it doesn't sound too crazy. Just gotta hit it and hold it. No, don't crash again. Oh, I don't want this crash to be so crashy today. Because I'm streaming, that's probably why. As I wait for this to wake up, if it does wake up, I just want to see what else I need. I need four horn. Uh, I can use one horn channel. No, I have to use two. I think I have to cut. Yeah, two horn channels. There's some more trombone stuff at the end we're going to do. Yeah, this is a couple multiple day project because this is. Yeah, all these things too. I need clarinet crescendos. Okay, crashing again. Come on, computer. We gotta get a better streaming setup. Um, oboe, 
the corn glo so we, we need these patches all to be dovetailed nicely with the two flutes and two oboes going back and forth it looks like the corn glaive plays along with the trumpet it's kind of a weird choice okay and the see two bassoons they're gonna need two different bassoons to make it sound bigger and then contra bassoon we haven't used yet Finish up this section. Okay. Now, where was I? Got the horns, trumpets. Found the one I wanted. Try this without crashing this time. Good. And all these trumpets can be put on the same cow foot. And this number channel four. Why is it doing that? Do the whole thing quiet. Actually, I think who's the culprit here? This one. Make that 60. 64. Really? everyone quiet. There we go. Nice. All right. I oh, got to take a break. This is taking a long time. Good